An Olympic-style robotics competition for youths kicks off in Singapore from Saturday called the First Global Challenge. More than 190 countries are taking part, the largest number to date. Each contingent will have to design and build a robot to win a game that seemed around a pressing global issue. Teams have already started preparing, each receiving a standard kit of parts that they can use to make their robot. Now, Singapore will be represented by a group from Anglo-Chinese School. The five youths got their kit about two months ago and are at the tail end of finishing their robot. Along with the competition, teams will also be given the task of researching and developing their own solutions to help improve access to renewable energy. This aims to help students become experts in emerging fields and position them better for college internships and future employment. It's the first time this international contest is being held in Asia. As it enters the sixth year running, we take a look back at past editions of the challenge. I first held in 2017 in Washington, D.C. The task then was to use robots to filter and purify water. The second edition in Mexico City had teams building a sustainable power grid. And then in 2019, the challenge in Dubai was to build a bot that could clear the ocean of pollutants. When the pandemic struck, the competition went online. The focus was on solving COVID-related problems like supply chain disruptions and reconnecting communities using technology. Last year, the competition returned in person. Held in Geneva, teams were challenged to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And this time round, here in Singapore, teams have to design and build a robot to win a game that reflects the process of hydrogen energy development. And for more on this competition, we're joined by Dean Kamen. He's founder of First Global and Barbara Gomez, regional director of First Mexico. Welcome, both of you. Oh, uh, Mr. Kamen, the global challenge happens in a different country every year. This year, Singapore, what is the motivation behind this effort to get the young thinking out of the box? We modeled this new competition after the Olympics, which, as you know, for more than 100 years has had a mission of connecting young people around the globe early in their life, early in their career, to get to know each other, to learn how to cooperate in a very positive environment. But we think uh, it's absolutely essential for the 21st century for the kids around the globe to also, at a young age, start to understand the importance of mastering technology to deal with all the global issues that their generation is going to have to deal with, like the ones that you just so beautifully described, water, power, the grid, healthcare, and now energy. And we're very excited to be in Singapore this year because not only are we focused on a particular uh, issue within the field of the future of energy, Hydrogen Horizons is the name of the game, but we know that the whole country of Singapore is dedicated to looking uh, to hydrogen as a part of the global uh, energy solution. Ms. Gomez, let's bring you in on the conversation here. The U's clearly excited to be a part of this competition, just watching that video earlier. But a competition like this, it brings together lots of different participants, lots of elements to this, teamwork specifically, and they need you know, to solve mm -hmm. some real world problems. How challenging is it at all to manage and perhaps motivate all these participating teams? Well, thank you so much for the space. I think it's, at first, it's a magical space. We have been involved for 20 years, and I can tell you that kids, when they are given such opportunities, such amazing uh, world challenges, and that it has a global context, uh, kids are motivated. They're so excited. They're thrilled with being part, potentially part of solutions that they will be enacting. So it's really not that hard. It's just a matter of presenting these amazing kids with fabulous mentors. That is a very key part to have really good committed mentors to uh, guide kids to do uh, these amazing innovative solutions that they come up with. All right, uh, Mr. Kamen, I'm interested, whatever the solutions are, whatever the problems are, the format through which this, this challenge is, is conceptualized, it's through robotics. Why robotics? So the robot really, as we've been saying for many, many years, 
We're not using kids to build robots. We're using robots to build kids. The robot does two things for us. It allows it to make it a very visual and exciting competitive sport. It's very hard to think of other engineering challenges that can be put into the format of a competitive sport with two minute rounds in a double elimination tournament, but also calling it robotics kind of hides the fact that in order to do robotics, you need to do almost every other form of engineering and mathematics and science. There's hardware, there's software, there's electronics, there's sensors. They have to build structures. They have to understand the physics related to motion. And so um, the robot is just a way to give kids a very general uh, uh, understanding of all the different fields in engineering that we hope uh, different kids will be excited by different aspects of this competition and it will cause them to go on and become engineers of one type or another, all of whom uh, will be working together, we hope, to deal with the global issues of the future. Mr. Kamen, amid all of that physics and maths and the calculations, no doubt, that will be involved in all of this, uh, the theme this year, it's on the role of hydrogen in renewable energy and reducing carbon. How can young people approach this with their unique perspective, perhaps differently from big business? Well, I think kids in general may lack the background and experience and knowledge of, of professional engineers in any field, but they have a big advantage. As Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And these kids don't come to this problem with some pre-baked understanding of a field that they might have been in for their career of 20 or 30 or more years. So the kids typically come up with some crazy, exciting ideas, many of which may not work, but then the kids will learn why they didn't work. But many of their ideas will spur them and engineers with a lot of background and experience in the fields of energy to think differently about the problem. And the fact that we have kids from more than 190 different countries, that means different environments and different backgrounds and different issues to deal with, allows them all to come together and come up with new and different ways to communicate, to cooperate and, and share with each other best practices to, uh, to make the world a better place when it comes to supplying more and more energy to more and more people with less impact on our environment. Well, Ms. Gomez, uh, listening to Mr. Kamen there, that is clearly, this is a very large problem and a solution to this would make a, 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 a paradigm change in how we manage our energy sources, how we generate energy for future generations. So this is a very big problem. But this, this competition is Olympic style robotics competition. So in a way, lightening up on a big problem, does this encourage competitors to be more open-minded in how they approach this. You take away the moral side of it. It just becomes a challenge that you solve mathematically, engineering-wise, robotics. I think you hit a key point first is so much more than just a robotics competition. It is value-centered and it is about collaboration. Uh, we have a, uh, one of our key values is gracious professionalism and cooperation. So, Competitors collaborate. So these kids are learning how to develop these amazing, innovative technological solutions with the math, all these fabulous tools. But most importantly, they're learning to work together, to bring together all the strengths that each one brings to the field. So yes, Olympics, like Dean said at the very beginning, is about bringing together everybody in a very collaborative way. Well, thanks both of you for joining us this evening. Dean Kamen, founder of First Global, and Barbara Gomez, regional director of First in Mexico. Thanks so much for joining us.